stiff arms of crap have a <laughs> great good match right there. Fighting through contact, fighting through offensive line, and being a double team, multiple moves stacked into one, just a play of pure domination. This is actual film, this is actual football talk. It's a football show, so it's football, not storylines. And you are listening to the 26th edition of Blue It's Blitz. This is the second attempt because I, uh, I shit the bed with the first time. So, Marcus, I apologize for that. Um, before <laughs> I get into all the, all the stuff that what we're talking about, how are you? Doing good, man. How you doing? Uh, you, you know what it is. Uh, the, grind is the grind is here. Uh, was it August 12th or whatever it is? So, we've got a lot, I got a lot of stuff to do before uh, – the season starts. Hopefully, there is a season. Um, today, we're talking about Bradley McDougald. Uh, me and Marcus will hit a little bit on why McDougald is on the team now. Uh, he wasn't a signing. He was traded for. Uh, if you don't know how or why at this point, uh, <laughs> are you a Jets fan? I don't know. It's been about a month. So, again, a lot of stuff coming uh, the next couple of weeks for you guys, um, which I'll hit on in a second. But 30 plays of him. Um, and then my schedule, like I said, I, I was telling Marcus it's a little bit crazy. I'm planning – today's the 12th. I don't know when it's going to come out. I plan on doing the next show of McDougal the 13th. Got Fan on the 18th. Uh, Pat, uh, Patrick Onuasar, whatever his name is, the 18th. Cager the 17th. Quincy Wilson the 21st. Gore the 24th. So there's plenty of film coming. Uh, I'm also going to have the call-in show, so I know people have been interested in that. It's going to be YouTube live slash call-in uh, shows with me and Kyle Smith probably doing like 53-man roster prediction pro, uh, plus call-ins. So I'd love for people to call in uh, you know, on that show. Other than that, the other housekeeping, uh, the reviews. So I got a, re- I think I got a five star rating uh, recently, which is which is cool. Uh, Jets X Shop. We just got a new Mim shirt, Davis shirt, Zuniga shirt, Man shirt. Uh, if you could see it on the camera, this is the new Mim shirt, which I think is pretty. It's just it. it I think it's just relatively clean. Um, not too much to it, so I, I like the shirt. Um, but other than that. There's really not much more to, to talk about the housekeeping. Marcus's time is precious, uh, as is mine recently. So we're, we're going <laughs> we're gonna get into the film. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. So actually, we're not going to get into the film. The quick thing to hit on, uh, Jamal Adams, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, Marcus. I think the last show I did, or the, se- the actual last film show I did, was with you about a month ago with the Seer. So um, since yeah. that point, Jamal Adams was traded. The only other thing that happened since the point that we talked was that he came out with that whole Manish article and was calling out Joe Douglas and saying he basically lied to him and put it off to January. Then it was March. Then it was after the draft. Then it was beginning of the season. Then he said he wasn't going to sign him. Um, he called out Gates and said, you know, he would he he uh, he wouldn't command the locker room basically, and and he wouldn't talk to the team at halftime. He would delegate it to somebody else. So. Um, that he basically called out the entire organization in terms of the two top guys. Uh, then he also tweeted out, out about Woody Johnson, whole uh, sexual allegation, racist allegation, whatever comes to that, we, we'll, we'll see. But I don't think you should judge somebody right on that on that initial allegation. We've seen that go, you know, bad at times. Um, so he called him out real quick. So he's calling. He could. He was pulling every plug he could. Uh, then you had Le'Veon Bell, who was convinced he was in a, Jamal Adams was going to stay, and he came out. Le'Veon Bell said today that Jamal Adams was talking to him when he first recruited him. That he was recruiting uh, Le'Veon Bell and saying, "Okay, well, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to change the organization." And then he also told Le'Veon that he wasn't going to try to force him, himself out, which obviously he forced himself out. Uh, right. To you, Marcus, for what the Jets got, and um, like I don't know how how privy you are with NFL trades, but and I should have wrote or written this down, but they got more than than the Raiders got for Khalil Mack. They got more than mm-hmm. the Texans got for DeAndre Hopkins. They got more than the uh, the Jaguars got for Jalen Ramsey, um, for a guy who at, the fans at a certain point wanted to trade him. But then it almost became a point where it was, oh my God, uh, he's shitting on the Jets so much, we're gonna be able to get like one first round draft pick for the guy. So <laughs> is there even a point of trading him? They ended up getting two first round, or, or uh, two first, one this year, one next year, uh, one third round pick, and Bradley McDougald, who is a starting level safety. Um, some of his film, uh, film a little bit spotty, but especially I know PFF loves the guy. I don't love him as much P- as PFF does. I think he's an average type guy, but he's still a starter nonetheless. So, uh, and they sent a fourth round pick with Jamal Adams. So, did you think the Jets got um, fair return? Um, and Overall, did you think this kind of had to happen at this point with, with Jamal Adams calling out the coach, calling out the GM, all this stuff? Well, yeah, considering everything that was going on and all the noise that Jamal was making, it had to happen. Uh, you hate to be, you know, I guess 
I'm just and don't get me wrong. As a former player, yes, everybody should get their money. I'm all for that. So that's that's not my beef here. It's the way you go about it is is the main problem. So, and I think that's part of the problem with some of the young guys and social media. There's a way to handle your business behind doors. For example, you don't see Dak Prescott all up in arms raising hell trying to get his contract. He's just saying, okay, well, we get it done, we get it done. You know, whatever it is, and you keep it moving. So. Uh, if you're going to be one of these elite players, no different than quarterbacks, you kind of have to act the part as well. You know, and that's why I, with certain guys, you don't hear a whole lot. Now, personally, if I'm Seattle, as much as I would like Jamal Adams, I wouldn't have given that much up for him because there's deficiencies in his game that really don't lead me to believe that he's the best safety in the NFL. For, you know, and that's just my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, honestly, you've been I think pretty strong got, on that before, even before yeah, the Jets and, traded him. Yeah, I mean, honestly, especially after the last couple of seasons, you know, there's a guy down in Tennessee that I think is probably the best one, you know, um, Byard. Um, but, you know, considering what, what the Jets were asking, I mean, yeah, they got the better end of the deal because now you get draft picks and, yes, draft picks aren't <clears throat> guaranteed and you don't know what you're going to get, obviously, and you don't know how they're going to pan out, you know, with the two the first rounders or even the third rounder that you get. And on the other hand, Seattle, yes, they may get Jamal for, let's just call it year, two years, whatever it is. But now they're in the same situation as, as the Jets were. Uh, and, you know, and they're already tight against the cap. I think Russell Wilson takes up the majority of that cap, you know, with his $36 million, Obviously, him being a quarterback, and if he continues to play at the level he, that he's, you know, he's been playing at, now you have the Patrick Mahomes deal that just hit the table. Deshaun Watson, is his deal is, you know, about to come, you know, pretty soon. So now – that cap number is going to going to rise as well, so that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for mm-hmm. you know Jamal to stay there long term unless it's a really really short deal, you know where he gets some money up front. So you know you know it's not or they you know that organization's been really good about you know about managing the cap. You know they did it before they got rid of the champ Chancellor and, and Richard Sherman, so they understand how to do it. You know it's just definitely going to be it's definitely going to be a project you know for them to get that done. So. You know, Jamal says, just like he said in New York, you know, he wants to retire there, where we've heard that before. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see what really happens with him. But, look, he had to go just from all the noise. Sometimes you just have to, you know, you got to get rid of distraction, which is what they did. And, you know, now he's gone, and now they just can move on. And, Le'Veon, you know, I know they're going to keep asking Le'Veon Bell about it. He just doesn't need to talk to you, you know, talk about it anymore because, I mean, honestly, it kind of makes him look a little butthurt. So just like let it go, mm-hmm. you're done with Jamal. Move on to the season and just keep it moving. Yeah, Jamal, he, he's he's not a professional like, the, and you see him sometimes on Twitter even now, Mark. So I'm sure you're not on Twitter all the time, but he's like he's like, or I think I was on Instagram. Like somebody's talking about the Jets, and I like, didn't even tag him really, and like, he commented on a Jets post like, "Oh, they're not even ready to win this year." It's like, dude, like like chill, like you're gone. Like leave Jets fans, right. leave random right. Jets Jets fans on Instagram with a hundred followers alone. Like what are you doing, guys? So um <laughs> yeah. I was I and mean, we talked about it before he got traded. We were we were saying that he's basically hurting his trade value by talking so much and the Jets still got a ton. Um which great, you know, the the problem is with it obviously is that Seattle's probably gonna be picking mid mid to late twenties, but at the same time right. there's been plenty of good players who've been picked mid to late twenties. You can you can obviously package up, you could pack it down or not package down, you can trade down, get more picks there's plenty of things they could do with those picks hopefully Douglas uh you know makes the most of of those picks but the way Jamal was acting you know the guy who was going to change the culture the guy who was never going to hurt the Jets all this stuff to do what he was doing and it comes out that he was texting Cowboys players when he was so mad about about Joe Douglas trying to trade him he was texting Cowboys players to tell the GM to trade for him in December or whenever it was so that's that's obviously a great look on him too that he was calling out Joe Douglas while doing even snakier stuff behind the scenes so um Mm -hmm. you know that's that's you know so honestly at the end of the day it kind of does yeah it sucks in one extent because he's he's a really really good safety whether it be one two three four five wherever you want to put him um he's the best player on the Jets so you lose him it does suck uh but at the end of the day kind of had to do it and they got a ridiculous return which will allow Joe Douglas to build around Darnold it'll build the offensive line build the playmakers build the premium positions and and safety I think is becoming more important in the NFL because of all the tight ends and and um quick passing game than it used to be um but at the same time I'm taking an elite edge rusher corner uh tackle um over 
a safety, maybe even receiver because of how much would help Donald if you think Donald is that next is that is that answer. So uh, it'll right. be interesting to see. But listen, the Jets kicked the can. They're not. I don't think they're necessarily punting this season. It was funny because they the Jets cut Winters, um, who had seven and a half million dollars. He's probably gonna be a backup. They traded Jamal Adams, who had to be traded, and then C.J. Mosley uh, opted out. And people were talking about okay, the Jets are punting the season because they traded a player who was yapping because a guy who had no, they had no control over opted out and because a guy who was going to be a backup they cut for seven and a half million dollar savings so that was really the only other news uh winters would i like to see him restructured and and maybe brought back here as a backup sure um but if he wasn't willing greg van roten's gonna start anyway mosley opting out it sucks the the concerning thing for me marcus with Mo, with mosley opting out is obviously he's he was now the best defensive player on the jets or was close to it anyway i, I think he's still a top five inside linebacker uh, we saw the difference in him last year. Uh, he made on the field the Jets, you know, famously first three quarters, they shut out the Bills. He went out. They let up 19 points, whatever it was, in a quarter. Um, he's a really, really good inside linebacker. The, the one concerning thing about his quote when he was leaving was he was saying something, obviously, it's about his family, which I, you can't get on anybody about. And people are like, oh, you, you know, and excuse my friendship, if you have kids around, they're like, call him a pussy and all this stuff for him opting out. If right. you have kids, you have grandparents, you have that stuff, you can't call anybody out for that. That's that's their decision. The one concerning thing about it was he there was something in that quote where he said he said, uh, uh, maybe I need to find that fire again, or maybe I'll find that fire again or rekindle the fire. Something about him rekindling the fire, which is like, okay, you don't have the fire now. You know, the Jets right. just <laughs> listen, bro, you, you still got like sixty million more dollars on guaranteed for the Jets the next couple of years. Like, I hope you have that fire. I think it's a little bit less than that, but uh that was the concerning thing about him opting out that he said maybe he'll find the fire. Uh, I, I don't know about that, but any thoughts on that? I'm going to pull up that quote real quick too while, while we talk about it because it is kind of a big talking point. Yeah, that's, that's, I, yeah, I didn't remember that, that last part of the quote, but that's interesting that, yeah, you got to, you know, rekindle that fire or find that fire again because I know, I don't know what, well, I have to use my experience and, and others that kind of were similar. So coming off an of injury, okay. that's enough fire in, in itself. Yeah. So, so this is this is what he said. Uh, the quote was, "I'm I'm out all year, so I have um I have all this time to mentally get better, physically get better, kind of kind of readjust and kind of find that flame again." That seems like I'm not trying to. I'm, I don't like too big of talking points, but find that flame again. Yeah, that means it, yeah. <laughs> like so now, are you just yeah? Are you just checking in for work or? Uh... That's kind of what that sounds like. <laughs> Dude, the Jets with the Wilkerson contract, the Jets with the Tremaine Johnson contract. Now, now Mosley, who I think is probably the top three inside linebacker in the league saying that, uh, it's concerning. Um, but hopefully he does come back healthy. Um, and, and continue with your point. And then the one, I'll get the one last thing before we go into the film. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the thing I was going to say is if you're coming off of an injury the way that he did, you're just – that fire should already be there. That's enough fire in itself. When you're rehabbing because you're pissed because you can't play. Yeah. Now, I will say this. There are some dudes that when they are rehabbing, they kind of get stuck in rehab mode. And they they actually kind of – they actually go the opposite way and get depressed because they're, because they're not able to play. Like the motivation goes the other way. So maybe he went – that's – maybe that's where he is, where, you know, he – the the rehab and and getting over the injury and everything was so hard on him that he you know got depressed or he got down on himself or got sad so now you know he's got to find it again so that does happen so I don't want to just completely take that away from him but I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna tell you that it's a little note. feeling like that <laughs> it's a little note in the notebook for me uh <laughs> Yeah, and I don't, I don't say like I know, and I know Joe Douglas might want to get rid of that contract, but I think like the fifteen, sixteen million dollars he's getting paid, um, which everything gets pushed back a year, might look a lot better um, in the next couple of years. That's obviously considering that's it, 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 assuming the cap continues to stay the same or go up, which it might go down next year. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but now he's going to be here guaranteed for 2021, 2022, uh, hopefully with with that flame. <laughs> so. Yeah. But minus that, like people are, oh, the Jets are going to be so much worse than, than than last year in their defense. I I think their defense still might be better than last year, um, because what you're adding from last year, just considering injuries and considering health, um, the inside linebacker duo, even with Mosley out, is you still have Avery Williamson coming back, you still have Blake Cashman coming back, you still have Hewitt healthy. So the inside linebacker duo, I mean, a trio, you know, quartet, whatever the hell it is. Um, is better than it was last year. So now you're you're subtracting Adams 
but with subtracting Adams, you're adding um, Desir, you're adding Poole another year, you're adding Quinton Williams another year, you're adding Bash for another year. So I, I don't think it, it might be about as good as it was last year, but I don't think it's going to be it's going to be completely terrible because you have a lot of young guys who are continuing to step up, and then you have Avery Williamson who's coming back, who's a huge piece of this defense as well. Um, and it's not like again, it's not like they're they're replacing. Adams with with Ashton Davis, you did the film of me with. We're, we're replacing right. the guy we're about to watch. Um, right. Who is a starter? Um, he definitely has lapses. And by the way, for the people who are going to be like, oh, well, you didn't put up the strengths and weaknesses. Guess what? Because I have another part to this. I have one part with Marcus. The next part, wrapping up all the other players. Uh, part two is going to have the strengths and weaknesses. If you're still listening at this point, so that's when you'll get them. So, uh, kind of had to rope you in there. So, um, yeah, let's watch the film on this guy again some of the strengths and weaknesses are going to come out in it and do not get discouraged because the first couple of plays, this Broncos game <laughs> was not the best. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, it does get better. Um, parts of it um, definitely do get better, but the, the, the first couple of plays were not the best in, in my opinion for him. And he's definitely no Jamal Adams in the box. That is for damn sure. 28 years old. Um, he's right. all the to me, his biggest struggles are in the run game. Um, he's an all around type guy, uh, an expert of none. Um, and in here, there's just some situations where I want to see him be a little bit more aggressive, um, which you'll see. And you see the arrow. I did not do this for every single time. It just takes me more time to do that little freaking arrow. And as you can see, it's not even as accurate as I want it to be. <laughs> so um, <laughs> there are just times where I want to see. And they, I believe they run this little, this, just a, this little screen. You know, it's not a bubble screen, whatever. I'm, I'm not good with screens. I said that last time, admittedly. I don't know a lot of the names of screens. But um, there's a lot of situations where I want to see him be more aggressive. Um, and right. here you see him get blocked up. Like, yeah, I know, you know, he, he's not even necessarily trying to be the force player because you have the other corner out there. I really want to see him square up, pop this guy, um, jolt the tight end back and then re, you know, reassess and make a tackle on the running back. I don't want to see him kind of, you're going to see a lot of this Marcus. Maybe you're going to agree with me. Maybe you're not, but he kind of allows himself and is fine with being blocked, which I don't love in his game. Right. Yeah. No, he, he, he kind of lets himself get blocked. Like he's in position, the position yeah. as well. The angle is good, mm-hmm. but you have to be just like you said. You got to be violent against that receiver, you know, and and push him back and create that, you know, especially separation. Yeah. You, yeah, that separation, especially considering you've already got somebody on the inside already. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, create, you know, be violent, push the wide receiver back. You may end up pushing him back into the ball carrier. You know, which he could have done here. He's just okay. Okay, I see it. You know, I'm just going. Not necessarily – he's not just getting in the way, but he's not as violent as he could be versus the block, you know, getting off and, and helping with the tackle as yeah. opposed to just being in position. Yeah, either blow, either blow up the block and make the, run, the, the, the receiver, like, cut it up more right into the, into the pursuit player um, or, or be violent and then disengage and then tackle because you already, have the, you already have the guy outside containing and you have the chase guy who, by the way – I realize this review, Griffin is not very good. <laughs> that's just my opinion. <laughs> but uh, that's something I noticed that he's he, – yeah, uh, I'm not the biggest fan. But we'll run through these plays. There's really not much more than that of this play. But um, some of the stuff in the run game, he's, not, he's, he's interesting because I think he's more of a strong safety because deep – I don't think he necessarily has the range and he gets locked into quarterback's eyes too much. So I'm not really he's, – he's good in man coverage, though. That's, that's what I'm going to say. And I don't want to get too many of the strengths and weaknesses away. So he's an interesting player who, like, is good in man coverage – sometimes makes plays where he shoots a gap and at other times will allow himself to get blocked, but deep coverage, he's safe, but sometimes too safe. Like it, it he's, he's kind of weird, but good. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't, he's, he's one of the weird, more odd players I've, I've studied. Um, Okay, so he he's deep right here, Marcus. If you can see my if you can see my mouse, I I believe this yeah, is the play. Yeah, I got you. Again, this is about a month away of doing this stuff, so I'm I'm super I'm almost as new to this film as you are because I haven't watched this in a while. Um. Pete, and one of my concerning things with him in the open field is sometimes he's an ankle biter and sometimes he takes bad angles. Um, so people yeah. were saying, and I had arguments with people, I'm not going to say who, um, people I respect and saying, okay, well, he's a good open field tackler. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, so he, what, what are you going to see? What are you seeing here, Marcus? Cause I think we're going to, we're going to agree. Well, I mean, just, yeah, it's just, I mean, he's good. He's a deep guy. He's got, the, he's got number one cover. Now, when you're coming out to that angle, that angle has got to be, the angle's got to be more outside in than inside. I mean, he really like almost ends up yeah. behind the guy that's even trailing him. So you want to see him like, take it. Yeah, his angle should be if you draw if you draw draw an arrow from the bottom of the twenty. Um, you yeah, know, I wish I could, but <laughs> going yeah from there going in that needs to be his angle. Yeah. Anytime you anytime you're in a two high shell, 
your angle is always outside in. That's mm-hmm. always your angle. Even if you have people coming across from the other side, your angle's still outside in. Either way, um, you know, based off of you know, based off of the structure and the organization of the defense. So yeah. here, all he has to do is come straight down and keep the Just outside cut him off. angle. Yeah, and he makes the tackle. But instead of running in, chasing the guy, that's you know, that's that's bad ball. Especially considering this guy here too. Like I know you said the angle regardless, but if if he were to come too far downhill, and that's what he's concerned about. This guy's gonna have to get... cut up and and right. pass this guy too. So he has exactly. to get he has to get more down. He has to get more down to the twenty here. So this is a this is just a bad a bad angle. You you can't let this guy get yeah. outside of you like that. Touchdown, right? You know? Right. So, and that's why. And that's why. To your point, that's why the. The, it's no different than soccer. When you when you still want to say when you talk about being organized, it's the same thing when you're in a too high shell. Because if you keep the organization as a safety, if you keep you know keep everything organized, your angles stay the same. So, hence, even if he comes down and let's just say he whips on the tackle, you still got you still have your inside help. Even though he's chasing him, he's still your inside help. If that makes sense. Yeah. Then, so then, the organi- then if you stumble him up and he, right. he and he misses a tackle, then he fucked up. You know. So Ex- right. So everything stays the same. You keep everything. Yep. You still keep everything organized and, and in the same. You know, in the frame of everything how it is. So you just got to take a better angle there. Yeah. And again, like I said, don't get discouraged. It's just I record them <laughs> in, in the way there that I see them, and I don't. This is I don't pull any punches. This is. I think uh, you guys know that by now. I think Marcus knows that. I, I, I don't try to just put up 20 good plays of a player. That's just not Ooh, how it, it no, goes you gotta, here. You got to show the bad plays. Um, to. I don't know if I – did I cut this one short? Okay, that's why I, I recorded it too early or something. Okay, so this is another play, and this is what I put up on Twitter. I said interception, and, and you can see my description up here, right, I think? You can see that? Yeah. yeah. And interception, but, but meh. <laughs> so it's like in, this is one of the plays that you see on twitter and, and it's blown up and you know oh it's so good on youtube all this stuff it's in his highlight film so he's in man coverage mm-hmm. beat in my opinion and his eyes go back to the quarterback and the ball is thrown mm-hmm. behind now watch I, I from the other angle so you see he's beat there oh no doubt looks back to the quarterback right here and the quarterback throws the ball behind which, which throws him right to the interception so yeah what do you what do you yeah. see what do you see at the, at the uh, off man coverage right here from from him on the uh, t- on the tight end who's a little bit flexed out? Uh, I'm trying to see well, knowing Seattle, uh, he gets a little wide. I mean, they're playing mm-hmm. outside leverage, you know, because Seattle plays a lot of one hole that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think his feet are a little inactive. Yeah, he gets stuck right there, which is mm-hmm. why he gets beat. You got to keep your feet moving. If anything, especially, and I can't remember what that tight end's name is, go up and create a little contact. I mean, I know you're trying to just, you know, Seattle does a lot of disguising, but you got to keep your feet active. And I think, home. I think even on the break there, he's already looking at the quarterback before oh, he yeah. even takes off, before right he there. even chases him. He's mm-hmm. already looking back. Yeah, right there. So that's, you know, that puts him, obviously, that gives you another two steps behind already. And yeah, this isn't a great play. This is just, damn, I got lucky. It's a bad play by the quarterback. Yeah, it's a bad play by the quarterback. The ball's thrown behind. Yeah, you get credit for the INT, but I don't know why this one would be blowing up on social media as a great play when it's a stat. It, was a bad, it was a bad ball by the, it's a stat, exactly. I got lucky. Mm-hmm. It's one of those plays where you come to the sideline, it's like, damn, I was beat, but I got it, you know. But I got lucky. <laughs> this is this exactly is this is, is this is literally why <laughs> I talk about I talk about process versus results all the time the process is not good here it's not a good play to me great great play to make the interception but feet are flat you know maybe maybe he could be a little bit more inside more but even if he even yeah. if he is trying to trying to put him to the inside at least at be, more, be more square yeah be, be a little more square and you're that there's a certain point where you you want to you want a wide enough base you don't want too wide of a base try to try to move right. from a split you know like there's there's right. a certain point there's a, there's a there's a happy medium uh eyes go back uh, bad ball. Where if the ball was led right here, this is a catch. Oh, no catch, doubt. Catch, and probably catch, a score. Catch, catch, catch. You know. So. Yeah. Again, um, if if you're not if you're not coming here for the truth, then don't 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 come. That's my oh. opinion. I still come maybe. <laughs> Just don't leave. Don't leave the bad review. <laughs> All right. Interception. Cover three. Read quarterback. Um. I let's see. I think he. Okay. I think he's right here. Um, okay. I think. Yeah. I think he has a creates a curl to flat. Yeah, gets the gets the reroute, gets depth, reads the quarterback. Oh, this is so. This is this is to me one of those plays. So I, I have a feeling what you're gonna say. So a little bit of a reroute, 
widens out, takes his angle, mm-hmm. exit angle, gets enough depth. I like that part of it. Continues to read yeah. the quarterback, reads the trajectory, takes him right yeah. to the spot, picks it off. That's now, good. good play, but I think you're going to say, this is kind of what he's supposed to do. <laughs> it, it, it is. Yep. <laughs> I Called mean, it. it's yep. a – yeah, it's a normal cover three drive. You don't have you don't have a, a threat in the flat, so yeah, there's no two threat. Uh, there's no two threat. Yeah, so you know after your reroute, or you you keep sinking, and yeah, it takes you 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 look at fine work. So yeah, it's a good job by him. You know, playing the coverage. Uh, there's nothing exciting about it, but he does a good job of playing the coverage and making an interception. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean it's I mean it's a good play. It's a a, a good fundamental play. Yeah, is you know is what it is what it should be. So. Yeah, like you could say say little, yeah. So, and and one thing, and I'm not going to go over the strengths and weaknesses again, but the one thing I did say is he he's a player to me, and and you're going to see this as far as we go. You know, this this is only four plays in, but I I did like 70 plays of him. He feel he's a player who doesn't make many plays outside of what he's asked to do or outside of his norm, um, Mm -hmm. in that way, which 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 is a really good player, a special player. But yeah, get depth. You know, he he stayed square. He's pretty patient with his feet right here. You know, reads the ball, picks the ball. It's It's like yeah, good play. Nothing amazing, you know, again. Yeah, and it, yeah, and, and I don't want everybody – I'm with you. I don't want everybody to get discouraged. Like, that's fine. Just, is, if he's consistent in doing what he's supposed to do mm-hmm. and fine, he's, yeah. making the play, he's making the plays he's supposed to make, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't have to be great. Like, it's, everything doesn't have to be a splash play. Now, this is not a – this is a play he's supposed to make that he does not make. Yeah, um, that's right in your face. You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the flat, and at, th- at this point, like you're 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 taking your exit angle to the sideline. You're in that you're in that curl the flat flat whatever this is. I I, I forget why I labeled this. If I watched the other the other uh, the other angle of this, but you are the mm-hmm. flat player. There's no way yeah. you can let this guy get behind you. So I, I would like to see him just keep his eyes here and just and just continue to b- basically match him underneath at this point, like a, almost like a trail. Um, instead of instead of turning back to the quarterback, letting him get be you know behind you and listen, like he gets. He gets so damn close to the ball, but guess what? A game, it's a game of not even inches. It's a game of millimeters, and he gets beat right here. Yeah, he's just got to continue to keep working out because here's yeah. the thing: when, especially if you're a flat, if you're the flat player, especially on boot, and the quarterback's working out, you got to keep working out. That's just boot rules. Whatever, whatever side of the boot's coming to, if you're the flat player, you keep working out. The safety keeps working over the one. Like that's just those are just boot rules. So, yeah, he. I mean, he just needs to do a better job. He just. If he keeps going out, this plays a lot easier. He makes the pick, you know, instead of pulling up and stop, instead of just dropping to the spot that you normally would and, you know, and stopping and then trying to find work, what you see is boot. You got to keep rolling to the sideline. Yeah, this is, this is just like – this is what I call like, a, like almost like a mental lapse. Like, you, you know, you obviously um, you have help inside. If, if he is going to throw the fade, okay, that, that's Griffin's job. That's not your job. Just continue right. to, like you said, just work towards that pylon, basically. And you can't let the guy get behind. It, it, this is this should be pretty simple, to be honest. Just just get continue to get, to widen out here. Um, well, yeah, well, that, that's why I boot. say that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those are that's just standard boot rules. You know, boot rules coming to your side immediately work to the sideline. Like and that's if, you just keep working to the sideline. And like <laughs> little things too. It's like he has inside he has inside leverage on him, so. Th- he's not going to beat him inside. So it's not like, Oh, he's, he's going to run a dig right behind you. You might have to jump it. Like he's only going to win to the outside right here to the front pylon um, that exactly. you, at least you're responsible for. So it's like that, that can't happen. That was, that was, that was a lapse um, to me. I, I didn't obviously didn't like that. Play. I don't think anybody else should like that play. Uh, okay. Let's see what this is. Uh, he's right here on the edge. I put soft hands in the run. So yeah. And We're, go back. Where is he? He's on the edge right here. So okay, and, gotcha. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily saying he in in this play, which is like a, it's one back power. I'm not saying he shouldn't necessarily should make this play, but he created a a huge gap right here. You if anything you want to see him squeeze down on this gap and really make it really make it tight for this. Uh, what is it? Uh, a B C whatever this is. I I didn't look at it for yeah. the uh, A B C D gap. So if anything, squeeze that D gap and set a hard edge. But he kind of my problem with him in the run game right here is he kind of just inactive feet lays his hand out there like that's that, that's yeah. there's no power with that there's yeah that's why he gets thrown to the ground there's no power i mean if anything you gotta you have to go attack the wide out especially if you're setting the edge which he's gonna end up being the edge setter uh because yeah. wagner and i don't know i can't remember the linebacker they're the flow players so you're the edge guy you know to that side of the ball bounces mm-hmm. uh you gotta you, you know especially you got a puller coming you gotta be the dude to set the edge over here 
So yeah, he has no power. Base is too wide. Mm-hmm. In, in, laying I think from, laying from the waist. It's it's yeah, deep. No. That's the Marys Thomas from this is for this okay. is on film. Oh two, yeah, 2018. Hey. Okay, yeah. I mean, he's two twenty five, two thirty. So yeah, he's slinging him to the ground. It's easy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, and he's got he's got he's got to be just even in the few clips that I've seen here now. Um, he's got to work on keeping his hips underneath him and his base a lot more narrow, and he's got to be more physical. Mm-hmm. As a, as a dad, say this, especially if he's going to be used the same way as as Adam was, then he's going to have to be more physical. Like he's, yeah. going, he has to be. Yeah, he needs to take the fight to him here. You know, just just yeah, like and that's what Adams would do. Like we saw plenty of Adams film, like Edelman or yeah, he would whoever would up, come yeah. in and, and try to and try to they would try to crack him, whatever it be. He would he would make the receiver think like, you know, three times, four times, five times about it. Go to bed and wake up with nightmares about trying to block Adams like that because that's not going to happen. Right. Um, so, and this is why I thought like in, in watching his film, like that's the thing they're gonna be missing the most, like the edge shedding, that, that presence in the run game from Adams. And I think, you know, I think Poole will fill that role more this year uh, than he did last year. Um, and that's why I think signing a guy like Logan, Logan Ryan at this point would be even more important for this defense than it was a couple of months ago when they had Adams because Logan Ryan can fill that role or even a clowny. Obviously it's a corner and, a, and, a, and an edge player, but the Jets mm-hmm. need that edge player now. Um, that they're missing with that, you know, that Adams is gone. So uh, this is, this is McDowell. You're going to see him shoot a gap or two, but more consistently in the run game, he's disappointing than he is positive in the run game to, to me. Um, and this is another play where I labeled it in uh, McDougal in run game. So uh, I'm going to assume this is not a great thing. Yeah. It, mm. What are you seeing here, Marcus? He's on the edge right here. Yeah. He's on the edge. I mean, Obviously, based off of what the run is, one, I can't really see where the split is or the wide idea is, but you got to anticipate the, anticipate the crack uh, for sure. And then you got to mm-hmm. play through the crack and you got to be more violent. You know, He's allowing himself to get it. blocked again. Yeah. So yeah. he has no power again, his feet off the ground. He's high, no base. You know, he's not a, attacking the wide eye. Even if you see the wide eye late, you still got to go, you still got to be more aggressive and, and take the fight to him, as we've been saying the whole time. And, and be physical just to you know just to give yourself an opportunity to whether it be get off and make the play or push the wide receiver out far enough mm-hmm. where you can allow your linebacker you know to squeeze through the hole and make the play you know he's you know he's got to be more violent here and he's not I mean he's I mean he's he's just really catching the block he's not attacking the block yeah, that's why I said I think if if you can, can you continue to see this you would agree with my my one of the weaknesses that I said he, he allows himself to be blocked like he if he's coming to crack you they want you to be blocked with with the receiver leveraged outside on you like that so there's a reason for it so try to blow it up like you said if he if he if at, if at oh, where, let me pause it if at this point if he were to take the fight to him and drive him back a couple of yards, now you might force him into, into this gap. And now the linebacker fills and then the run shut down for, you know, it didn't go for a huge gain, but that's an extra two, three yards right there. So right. Um, he needs to take, he can't, he just keep, he continually allows himself to be blocked. And, and that's a situation where he can't, but then there's plays I see him Marcus, which is interesting where I'll see him on, on a, on a, a GT counter taking on a, a guard. So it's like, wh- 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 where I don't see the disconnect is. So I don't know if it's I don't right. know if it's he's hesitant in the run game because he doesn't he doesn't he's not processing what he's seeing quick enough or what it may be. But um, yeah, he's, got, he's not attacking, taking a fight to guy. Yeah, because if you're attacking something like that, then it should be easy for you to attack attack wideouts. If you're you know attacking linemen on on pool <laughs> counters. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. It should be three hundred pound really lineman. Easy. He bounced off and made the tackle. So like, there's plays of him doing it. Um. He sucked up that line, so he's right. He's right here. He's in the box a lot. Um, the one thing I did, I did give him, and again, this isn't this is nothing like out of the crazy norm. But the one thing I did give him, um, is that he does get his hands up at at the line. He does get some pass deflections. So, um, yeah. he is sucked up a little bit at, at this play action right here. It looks like they're they might be running an in, inside zone split, outside zone, mid zone split. Obviously, they yeah. don't. Um, he gets sucked up a little bit, gets his hand in the in the in the uh, throwing lane, and really nothing crazy, but uh. I did want well, I just, I mean, I just up there to, to mention it. No, that's a good play because it's good awareness. Because, I mean, the obvious, obviously the Bears got what they wanted where they sucked up he, you know, he and the linebacker to create that, you know, that window, mm-hmm. you know, for the pass to go through. But, I mean, he does a good job of, you know, at least getting the hand up and, and knocking it down. Now, I think they may have gotten a pick or they got close to it. But, yeah, I think they did. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, it's still a good, it's a good play. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, which is a positive. He he does do that uh, quite a quite a bit, where he will get his hand up if he is if he is sucked up a little bit, uh, and he quite, he got quite a few pass deflections be, because of that. And it, and it was a uh, a pick from I think it's Griffin right there. Yeah, twenty six is Griffin. Yeah. So, a uh, good job right there. And and it's it's something small, but obviously that small thing led to an interception, which is which is a huge thing. So yep, no doubt. Uh, it count. Uh, McDougal too far. Okay, so this is a play. This is this is one of those plays that you're not going to get if you just watch every tackle or everything that that McDougal is involved in. This is a play I will critique him for. Um, third and five right here. He is he, I, the tight end flex. I don't know what. I don't know if there's a pre snap motion, whatever it is, but you know um, he is on. He's in man coverage right here on eighty, which I think eighty is Burton or was Burton at least. I, was Burton? Yeah, I believe so. Um, Ooh, that's the tight end. He's yeah. 10 years off. He's already eight years off. So do you see what I'm saying? Backing up on a tight end, yeah, on third and five. Like, okay. On, so you see why I labeled this <laughs> too far off bottom third and five. There's yeah. really not much else to explain right here. Um, if one, it's not like he's Tyree Kill where you have to play off him where you're afraid to run past. He's going to run past you. He's not, he's not Julio Jones. He's not even one of these guys. You know, play that, play that stick, you know? So I don't know why he's backing up because, listen, at this point, did it go to him? No. Could it have? Yes. So that's yes. that's so that's why I'm marking that as a negative play. No doubt. I mean, and if anything, look, it's a tight end. I mean, it's a tight end. I mean, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm, I don't know, call me dumb or whatever it is you want to call it. It's a tight end. So unless, you know, unless this, and then particularly on thirty-five. So unless it's like Kelsey or somebody like that that can actually It'll run. Hurt. Yeah, somebody you know. Yeah, somebody that can actually run. Uh, I'm not backing up is, you know, I'm just, if I'm going to line up at seven yards or eight yards or whatever it is, I'm just going to be flat footed and I'll just wait on it. But I'm not going to back up on 35. Yeah. That's, you know, this is situational football and he's got to do a better job at that. Yeah. I'm fine with like, even, even the alignment right here, like, yeah, he's a little bit past the stick, but that's okay. Like I'm, I'm fine with him a yard or two past the stick. You can break and you can break on it, throw a little foot fire here, run your feet, get ready to break either inside or outside. But you, you can't, you can't get your way onto your heels right here and just give them the break outside. Like this is a completion 10 times that, well, it's Trubisky. So maybe not, so, but yeah, <laughs> a, good, a quarterback who's going to get it there. There should be a completion 10 out of 10 times, you know? So uh, it's, it's something I don't like to see because you're playing a good team like that, you know, it, not, well, not the bears, but, the Jets are playing plenty of good teams this year. That's going to be a completion nine, nine times out of 10, you know, um, let's see what this one is man rep tight end. So I do. So I do like his man reps. We did not we, the first two man reps we saw so far. Marcus were not positive overall though. I, I definitely give that. I think it's the best part of his game. Just two did not start off well, but um, overall he is right here on the, on the near hash. I believe that's him um, man yeah. coverage on, on third and three. Yeah, that's a lot better. I take yeah, that right. Day. Now he's yeah, playing the sticks. That's... Now he's playing square. The only thing I would say is maybe his eyes go back a little bit too soon. But he, but I'm, I'm, I think he's comfortable with where the tight end is really. Well, where he is, him. yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's already he can he can still he can feel the tight end, and he's good with his distance and everything. Yeah, where he is with tight end. this is so this is this is a close enough distance. Now, if, now if it was two, three, four yards, bad. But this is a yard. That's okay. We're, we yeah. I think we can give him that. And then after two, I I don't really think there's a better way to play this ball. Uh, I had the close up view, get the get the get the uh, the upfield hand on the on the hip, which one yeah. it both allows you to contain if you miss the ball, and it allows yeah. you to pull yourself tighter and through the ball. And he stabs through it, doesn't swipe at it. That's that's a perfect exactly. play. That's perfect. That's perfect. It is. That's a perfect play. Good job on the coverage. I, I liked uh, how he was physical at the line. He was square when he did it. Mm -hmm. Broke on, yep. you know, played the route right as is. You know, made a good play on. You know, made a really good play <laughs> on, on the ball. Yeah, I mean, it's perfect. Yeah, can't play Whole, any, You know, so how many play? How many? And and it's. I'm getting to obviously. We we've done a lot of film together, especially secondary guys. What a novel concept! Holy shit! People stay square. I know. And it works. <laughs> like, what is this? This is I, – I've not seen this a lot. Know. It's new. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But stays square, doesn't overreact, gets a, gets a nice hard punch on, on him, uh, which, yeah. which, which obviously, you know, jams up. He, he, this is what I call in my, in, my, in my strengths and weaknesses, crowding the route break because he's crowding the route break. Um, yeah. Perfect. Like, this is, a, this is a perfect play. So, yeah. do more of this, which he does. I, I will give him a, definitely a big plus in man coverage. I like him in man coverage. So – Awesome play. Yeah, that is a good play. So, well, well, now, knowing that he can do this, I mean, we'll, we can talk about this later later mm -hmm. on, does that 
change how the Jets play defense now? Does it allow, as opposed to having Adams more at the line, being the blitzer now, and allow McDougal to be on the mm-hmm. tight end more, and now you're blitzing the end, linebacker, uh, you know, now you're bringing extra people now. Yeah. Like, you know, does it allow you to do more, which I think it does. If you got more, the more people you have that can cover man to man, it allows you to do more up front. Yeah, and, and he can play you know, deep. That, I I have plays of him yeah. playing deep, but my problem is with him deep, his range isn't the best, and he he gets locked on. I don't know if we're gonna see a lot this episode, um, but he does get locked onto the quarterback too 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 long, where he mm. won't he won't leverage himself over route concepts properly, and he'll be locked on too long, and then he'll break as a quarterback throwing it, but you break yeah, as a quarterback throwing it, that's too late in the NFL. Exactly. So um, there'll be times where like they're running, let's. Uh, Whatever it may be, I I call it hawk. You might not call it hawk. Or a vertical from the outside, and then like a ten to twelve yard out from the other guy. Um, yeah. and he'll be in cover two, and he won't position himself even over that number one running the vertical. He'll be stuck in the middle of the field. They'll, they'll throw it vertical and get past him in a cover two. It's like that can't happen, you know, because he's right. stuck in the quarterback. So there's some issues I have with him in, in that in that uh, way. But in terms of man coverage versus tight ends, and I've seen him do it on slot receivers too. He could do that. So that's a positive. Now, do they blitz, you know, pull more because of this? And maybe, maybe a pool doesn't play this as much. I don't know. But I think Logan Ryan adding him too would be a nice, <clears throat> nice like chess pieces to work with in the defense. Or honestly, even Clowney, like depending on what he wants. But we'll, I guess we'll see. Um, yeah. He's right. He's right here again Good on the Y. Right. Um, again, square, hands on. Mm-hmm. And he gets – so he gets tossed a little bit at the top of the route at – at the route break, but he keeps his hands on, he gets his hips around quickly, and he matches them, you know? Yeah, he does a good job of, getting, of recovering. I mean, that happens. I mean, sometimes, especially mm-hmm. when you're jamming a tight end, I mean, mainly it's for you little guys that it happens to. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, shots fired. <laughs> Got you. Um, yeah, he's you only know, like 250 – I think he's like 210, 215. So, and you, you have the tight end who's probably 250, you know? Yeah, so he's yeah, so he's leaning on him, you know, trying to. I mean, he's doing a good job trying to reroute him, you know, and obviously, you know, push, you know, give as much force as he can, you know, on the reroute, um, which is why he's leaning a little bit, you know. But at some point, you know, especially when you feel that you're in that five yard range, you know, now you can just take your hands off and just run with it. You have to be mm-hmm. so antsy, but he's quick enough where even though he the tight end crosses his face, he can whip back around and still match the route, like you said, and he's still mm-hmm. in good position. You know, as you can tell by the film. So, so I mean, I'll take that. I mean, I'll critique him on his technique, mm-hmm. but I'll still give him a good grade on the play. Yeah, you know, it, it, if it's a plus or a minus, you give him a plus for that play. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, like you said, like trying to trying to get so physical de- deep down the field at the tight end, like you might, you know, just match, match his hip, make him work through you. Um, so you're able to use a little bit more of that, uh, of your uh, athleticism instead of the physicality at the top where you exactly. might not want to try to match the physicality. Exactly. Um Okay, so so this play he took he took the angle. So this is a, this is a kind of a weird play. This is kind of um, what the hell is the phrase I'm looking for? I'm not gonna get it right now. Uh, it's, it's been a long day. Oh, I'm I'm kind of gonna give him a mulligan for the angle he took right here. It's kind of odd. You'll you'll see it's a mid outside zone, um, and he's gonna come from the bottom right side of the screen here, Marcus. And mm-hmm. he's taking Angel out to the inside, but he gets he uh, he gets popped outside uh, Zeke by Clark, so his angle kind of gets screwed up right there because he gets popped outside and momentum takes him outside. So it's maybe he could stay a little bit farther outside right here, but it is kind of like in this scenario a weird play for Zeke to, <laughs> to break outside like that because he got popped from Clark. So, um, but the good thing about this play was this part right here. You're to see right here. Oh yeah. It's a good job getting back. Yeah. Loose. Get back. Loose, punch it. Loose ball. Punch it mm-hmm. out. Yeah. That's a good job. No, so, I don't think that I, I don't go back to the beginning because I don't think that angle was weird at all. I'm saying like neither he, neither do I. I'm just saying it, it looks like he got beat right here, but because well, so watch. So this is what I'm saying. Because because Zeke was cutting up through the what is that, the A, the the backside, the backside yeah, A. Yeah, and he's he was taking back. more of a vertical relationship right here. He was kind right. of coming down this way, but because Clark was was scraping down the line of scrimmage. He gets popped outside, and he gets popped right, and, and it beats him. McDougal outside. It's so like, yeah, he could have made the play right here, but it's kind of like a. It, that's just a weird play in terms of like him getting beat right there. That's that's kind of what I was saying. Yeah, no, I got you. I don't know. I mean, no, I, I get what you're saying. I just think that angle could have been a little where bit better. He is, yeah, because of where he is on the angle. Uh, if anything, Clark kind of knocks him. In, you know, his if his angle was better, Clark would have knocked him actually into it. If his angle would, you know, if he would have been coming, if he comes down 
you know, more straight down like he is because the play, cause, because based off of the play, I mean, it's, it's the zone play, obviously, and mm-hmm. Zeke cuts it back, but his angle is still down and to the outside. And just like we saw in the first play or the first couple of plays, he has a tendency to where he's going where the man is as opposed to going where the man's supposed to be yeah. kind of deal. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, but I mean, but either way, he does a good job of making up and punching the ball out, which, you know, we know the Seahawks are notorious for doing, you know, for creating turnovers like that. Which is perfect. So and that's one thing he'll, and that's one thing he'll bring, you know, yeah, he'll, he does. he'll bring, you know, he'll bring to, you know, to the Jets organization, you know, that tenacity of getting the ball out, punching the ball out, ripping at it, uh, because the Seahawks, they coached it up very well. It's, they're, they're it, really, it's one of the things that I marked down in, in his positives was that he he does look to punch the ball out in opportune times too. It's not it's not like when yeah. he's like one on one with a guy like here. Like yeah, at this point, yeah, it's one on one, but he just he just jump cut inside of a guy and the ball is clearly it's 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 gonna be loose right there. It's not tucked as tight up to the body as it could be. So good job, good accuracy, mm-hmm. good punch. Um yep. and he obviously pops it out and the Seahawks uh they they recover. So really, really good job loading up right there. I was going yeah, I mean, to say fisting no. it, but I'm not, I don't want to say fisting it. Punching yeah, it out. No. Punching it out. I yeah. did. I did. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it, it happened already. I, I'll take my lumps. Um, okay, play 13, split second decision, uh, guess outside hips. Okay, I don't know what exactly. Oh, oh okay. So this is another weird uh, – I'm remember. i going to remember this play. I think it's a, this is like a jet sweep. Okay. Um, so you have McDougal who's in the box right here. I, I will create so he does love to touch around here. The again, this is a play where like there's a lot of space for him to cover. Um, the one thing I will like critique is I think he should have guessed outside to, to me on this play, just based on two things to me was you know there's gonna be pursuit from the inside, and based on the 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 uh, receivers, I think it's Tavon Austin, 2018, number ten. I think yeah, um, based on his hips, it it, it seems even though he does give you a little jab inside right here. I would still like to see him play outside the in right here because you have the inside pursuit and based on even his hips, even when he does give that jab step. But like I said, this is a shitload of ground for him to cover. So it's not a, it's not right. like a play where I'm going to kill him for it, but I would have liked to see him stay outside just based on, on his hips and the in, inside pursuit. I don't know if you agree with me there, Marcus. Yeah. I'm trying to see how the, how the play develops. Yeah, I like. I'd like to see him. I mean, initially, I know he has to kind of guard the the inside gap, but mm-hmm. you got your D lineman who's actually playing that gap, even though it it seems like the the old lineman is blocking him. But I think that's the that's the D lineman's gap. If you even look how he plays it, you know, he kind of lets himself get taking it into that gap. That's yeah, a hole. So <laughs> that's a hole. Yeah. It looks like I actually, mean, it's, de- it's, it's definitely a hole. But but yeah, he needs to shoot that faster. I mean, that, that needs to be one of those things where he needs to see it and shoot it faster. I mean, and honestly, if he sees it quick enough, I mean, and I know this, this is kind of dangerous in this kind of film study, I mean, he really could just go ahead and shoot the inside gap and just make the play, to be honest with you. I mean, it takes long enough to develop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right there. I mean, mm-hmm. I may just go ahead, just, just me personally, I may just go ahead and just shot my shot, you know, at that point. I mean, either because you know it's because either way, even if it's pass, okay, if it's pass, I know I can get back. But I'd rather guard myself against, you know, against this run, especially knowing that Tavon Austin runs a lot of gadget plays and reverses and things like that. I'd rather just take my chances of tackling him. And if it's a pass, you know, then I can get back up and play the pass. Or if I get a penalty, whatever it is, which you won't because I guess it's a – they give you run action. I'd rather just take my chances and, and go ahead and tackle him. Maybe. Yeah, you know, just from that instance, but it's but because of the way that he waited, yeah, that's hard for him to cover a lot of ground. And now mm-hmm. he's even though you have a D lineman in front of him, he's now you know McDougal's trying to play two gaps, you know, in like a five yard space, mm-hmm. and you know that's, I mean, that's almost impossible to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's like I said it's not an easy position for him, but again, it's like little, the little things that he could have fixed up there. But it's not a play where it was like as bad as that Broncos play where he completely missed that angle where the guy ran for a touchdown. You know, so it's 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 not a huge negative um, play in terms of that. No, um, so this is this is a play. I, I even though he's on the he's on the edge right here. Uh, looks, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what they were. It might have been man. It might have been a man coverage call um initially but they run the, the cardinals run another one of these like jet sweeps uh whatever right. you, whatever you want to call it the jet motion hand it off to the jet motion um mcdougald mm-hmm. 
So I, I, I like this play a little bit more, even though it's it, he doesn't make a play for net, you know, he doesn't make the run stuff or anything like that. But I like that he contains the outsider here and he and he runs with the tight end to the sideline. Um, and yeah, he, one true. thing you can't see it from this angle is he uh, I told from a different angle. He takes his left arm right here and is working the chest, and he's, his outside arm is free right here um, to make yep. a tackle if he w- were to cut outside. So this is a play where you see him get a little bit more physical, um, contain the outside, run to the outside with Kirk. Who Kirk? I don't. Uh, maybe he should. He should probably should have cut up field right here and not try to keep going to the outside and follow his blocker. Yeah, no. But that's a story for a different day. So uh, what do you what do you see from this one? No, I like that. I mean, he's playing. He's playing the block. Uh, he actually has control even with one yeah. arm. And even, you know, and here's the thing. If if you're taking the block and stretching it out to the sideline and the runner wants to keep running to the sideline, here you go. did your job. Yeah, yeah, you did your job <laughs> without even having to do anything. And um, I do like the little punch here at the end. Yeah. Where he, mm-hmm. Yeah, where he's trying to – Right here. You know, yeah, yeah, where he's trying to knock it out, you know, get a couple – because you, you just never know, you know, what will happen. So, yeah, I do like that. But, yeah, I mean, he gets a good grade on this for me. And, and yeah, I, I marked this as a positive, too, and I, I marked that punch as well. And I, I think it's a punch in terms of when you talk about, like, the circumstance. If if this was in the more of the open field, I would give him a little bit of a negative because maybe he could have broke it, swung back inside, whatever. But considering that he's running to the sideline, you have that inside pursuit, take a little bit of a risk right there because he's already going to the sideline, you know? Right. So, um, I, yeah, I, that's a positive play, even though, like, it, it was more of a like, containing the run. Um, that's what you're asked to do sometimes. You're not going to make that stuff every single play. Correct. Um, or nearly any every single play. Man rep third and ten. Um, he is. Let me move my my one window. Uh, he is on man right there on number eighty six. Um, and this is another. I I think it's a it's another good man rep. Uh, I couldn't get the whole him in the, the screen the entire time, but again, pretty square, hands yeah. on. And then he yeah. eventually looks back at the quarterback. And I also like the one thing I do like about him is his hand placement right here. He's where he's working that that rib that hip to to, yep. to mess up that that drive phase that route stem. Um, sees the quarterback throw it, and then he breaks on the ball, and uh, I think he goes for another interception here, but he doesn't get it. So, yeah, he didn't get it. No, that's, that's good coverage. And like you said, I do, I do like the hand placement when he's being physical at the line, especially because you do want to. Your control is with the way that that I teach it, and, and the way that I was taught. You know, it's either under the armpits or whatever it is, or like mm-hmm. down, like in the rib, or like you know, right in the hip area. So that allows you any punch or any push. You know, knocks the wide out off of you know mm-hmm. off of his path. So yeah, he he does a good job with that. Yeah, yeah, under the yeah under the armpit, um, because you're really controlling that arm as well, plus the center of mass, and then you know the rib to the to the hip. You're that's when you're really controlling that center of mass because like I tell them, yep. it's, it's it more comes up with offensive linemen, but if they have a strong core and strong legs, you can push their you can push their upper body, but their base is still the same. Right. It's like people can bend like this. But if you're if you're right. strong in that core, you're not going to move a guy. But if you attack the hips in the center of center of mass, that's when you move guys. Um, mm-hmm. So good job with the hand right there and and, and throwing off his route stems. I'm I guarantee you he's not supposed to be bending that inside as far as he is. Um, I guess based on the way they drew it up. Um, and then good job looking back and attacking the ball. So another good man rep on 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 third down. So um, I think mm-hmm. the Jets will be able to use him in that way for sure. Uh, okay, this is a, this is one of those reps, Marcus. I said I don't know if we're going to get to it, and apparently we're going to get to it. Um, <laughs> where I'm saying, uh, a, is this another, uh, McDougal stare at quarterback needs to get over routes. Okay. So it looks like, looks like cover two, at least a lineman shell. Yeah. Uh, well they do something uh, different yeah. on the bottom. Maybe that's like a cover six on the bottom, but on, he stems one, two, three, four, five. He jumps on the inside. No, they, no, they, they just messed up on the bottom. That is not, that is bad. You do not want that guys no, like that. That's that nothing, coverage. yeah. Because <laughs> he's open. Is, yeah. yeah, I don't know what – yeah, that's miscommunication. There's times – Because Thomas, cause Thomas there's, is playing two, the corner's playing three, and it looks like the inside guy's playing three. I don't know if what he's playing three, he'd be outside on him. Yeah, they, they screwed up so- – this is th- this is so there's times, Marcus, I'll be completely honest, like, uh, you know, I, I've learned a lot over the years, but there's sometimes where I'm watching play, I'm like – do I just not know shit? Do I not know this play? Like, what what kind of defense is this? No, but this this no. ain't this ain't it. This ain't this is no. nothing. No, they screwed that up. <laughs> so, this is why I probably this is one of those plays where I'm putting it up. I ignore that side of the field. But I'm like, okay, McDougald in a cover two zone, <laughs> you know, yes, deep half. So exactly. he's deep half. These guys don't exist. Don't even watch them. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, this is this is almost okay. So this is literally what I said before. It's a little bit different. They're they're running like this uh, this ver- this vertical seam concept, um, where there's like a there's like a vertical stretch type play. 
um, where they, they end up a little bit too close, to be completely honest, in my opinion, the, the two receivers, receiver threats right there. But at this point, for McDougal, if you're playing – if you're playing, okay, go, no, sorry, go ahead. You already saw it. You can, you can go ahead. I know, you get, yeah, he stops his feet. You got to keep pedaling. Especially you got two guys b- running yeah. vertical at you. One, you got you to gotta stay in your pedal. And two, he's actually not bad in the weave, but because he stops his feet, he doesn't have enough depth to go over the top to make the play on the outside guy. Yeah, and it's I mean, because he's staring at the quarterback. It looks like he, he gets stay- locked because he's staring at the quarterback the entire time. And yeah. like, especially when you're, you have to take the the, the deep like uh, as obviously as that deep half safety like the you know that vertical that most vertical threat. If these guys are both starting to run vertical and they're both taking vertical stems to to but but bending to the outside, then you have to get over top of that vertical of those vertical um, stems. So right. I would like to see him, like you said, like instead of freezing his feet, like you know start weaving over and then get over top of it, so you don't have to cover as much ground when he throws the ball. Correct. Throws the ball, Josh Rosen, and boom, it's a completion, and he makes a tackle, but th- that shouldn't have been that with yeah, him. Yeah, that, that should have been an easy INT. Yeah. That should have been so, an easy pick. It's exactly what I was talking about before. We need to get over route concepts instead of instead of staring at the quarterback and being a little bit more aware um, of his surroundings. Uh, 17, a uh, little too safe. I don't, I, I forget, I don't know if this is going to be a play where I'm reaching a little bit for this. Uh, yeah, so, um, He's he's a deep, he's a deep half right here again. So this is another scenario where you're you we could say the same thing as you said before. It's a tight end, so I don't think it's a play so deep right here. I don't know if you agree with me with me there. I think it, I think he backs up a nah. little bit too far. Maybe yeah, maybe wrong. You, yeah, well, no. When you're on the side of the tight end, you can slow your pedal down. Now, if you're like if you're if they're in the eleven personnel, whatever mm-hmm. it is, and you're on the two receiver side, then you, when you see his pass and you're getting vertical threat, then yeah, you kind of got to get out of there a little bit. But when you're on the side to the tight end, you don't really have to get out as fast. Plus, the way that unless they change it, the way that Seattle coaches their LBs to run with uh, two down the seam or two vertical, whatever it is, this is a, the linebacker should be undercutting it. So if he slows down, he he actually has a chance to make a play on this seven route. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, hundred percent. Yeah, of yeah. Course. So yeah, he he gets out. So he gets out. He I think he bails out too fast, you know. And my rule and my rule is, especially you know, on the tight end side, you don't have to get out as fast, especially with with a bus set like this. You get a good reroute by the corner. So one is taking all day to get out, um, you know. You know, and it's still just because of the action will put you over one if the ball did, you know, by chance did go to him. But you don't have to be as fast coming out when you when you're to the, the tight end side. Again, like in, like that's what I said. Like if, if this was Tyree Kill, then yeah, sure, play a little bit conservative. But um, right. I don't think that you have to worry about the tight end burning you 50, 70 yards down the field right here. So be a little bit more conservative in your back pedal. And if you are concerned about this, like this this wheel, or I don't know if it was supposed to be a vertical route that was just you know uh, you know uh, kind of squeezed to the outside right there. Looks like it was supposed to. Be, looks like that was by design a little bit, maybe not as far, but. Um, like I said, I think just playing a little bit more cons- – not not uh, not playing as conservative here, where I, I said that in his deep coverage, he's a little bit too conservative at times. And I mm-hmm. think this is an example for me of, of that. Or I know for for me personally, this is an example of that. Yeah, he lays a big shot, but you just also let up a 20-yard you know, throw, which maybe Wagner or whoever should have maybe played this a little better. But Well, no, I mean the eh, – not really. Of, yeah, yeah, no, no, not I mean, really. He's playing trail. That's, that's, his, that's his job. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's not bad. I mean, mm-hmm. he's just as a safety. I think he's too deep just because he got out too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Too conservative, which is one of the weaknesses. You know, for the preview of the weaknesses, I did put that as one of his weaknesses in deep coverage. He's too conservative. Uh, I don't have the whole player right here, so I don't explain exactly what it was. But I put whole robber, and I'm, I'm not sure if he was in a whole zone or a robber. Um. Mm. And again, this is plays where I see him actually. He can, he can lay some shots, so he he can, he lay the wood a little bit. But I always see this show up a little bit more in his game. Um, this now yeah. this is unlucky. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna credit him or, or discredit him right. for the ball popping out like that. Like you can't you can't plan for that. But uh, I like his eyes right here. Um, drops yeah, back, stays over top of that. Looks at the quarterback. See the quarterback loading up. Breaks on it early mm-hmm. because he's reading the quarterback and puts himself right on the ball. Pops it out. Good play. Yeah, it is a good play. Yeah, like you said, unlucky that. The, the Rams got it back, but you know, initially he does a good job of reading it, yeah, and, and creating a creating a turnover. Yeah, now that may, maybe now maybe yeah, exactly. So if one of his guys here, maybe this is a pick now. But this is one of those plays where again, this is how I don't know how people grade. It is a completion on him. Like now, is this a bad play? I, I don't know. This is why I don't look into stats really. You know, this is why yeah, I right. film because I don't know how that works. 
Like there was right. a play like last year. Like I, I use this example all the time. You know, Sam Darnold hits Sharon Peak right in the chest on a slant. Sharon Peak pops the ball up there with alligator arms, and then the ball goes up and it's an interception. Is that a bad play for Darnold? No, he hit the guy right in the chest. You know, that's right. the perfect spot. So, based on stats, though, is it? I couldn't tell you. Um. All right, so this is a weird coverage. I, this is one of those plays where I had to watch it a, like a lot, um, and I could be missing something. I labeled it as a combo coverage, um, but I don't really. I'm, I'm, I, there's some plays I I can't know everything they're doing. Like you can know a lot, but to then to dissect it and like, okay, is it three by one or two by two or or you know, like there's so much that could be happening. He's right here on the near hash, and he opens up and matches. Um, mm-hmm. So maybe he's directed to open towards the strength, and and this is just the combo part where he's just one on one, and the rest of the guys are zone. Um, right. It's it's it, it looks odd because it looks like you have man, it looks like you have man, and then the rest of these guys are in zone. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the way that they they look like they're playing. It's like um, I'm trying to see what different. I mean, like some people call it. It's it's like two skill or three skill where you have one guy. Everybody else is playing three around it, and the skill guy's playing is man to man. Yes, I can. You know, yeah, yeah. just yeah. to make it easy. Or, like, for us, like, we got a call, it's called Packer, where the outside guy's manned up, everybody else is playing four, you know, uh, four against, you know, the rest of the wide receivers. But the outside, the outside corner, depending on the strength, you know, is locked up man to man on the wide receiver. Especially like, yeah. it, with like more of like three by one sets. Or yeah. Is this so a three like, by one? Yeah. Man, yeah. Yeah, so it's mainly versus three by one sets, you know that kind of stuff. So I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, get, yeah. So uh, so when it, when it's, you yeah, know no, no yeah, so I get like we were saying like like we say three skill or three. Uh, I don't know if that's what you said, but um, that's what I call like I guess that that is a combo coverage to me. I just didn't know what combo coverage yeah. it was. So I'm guessing with him, it's just okay, open open towards his strength. He's not a vertical threat, so open to the vertical threat, which is obviously to this side of the field uh, because this guy is locked, so you have to worry about him. So just open up and match right. anything that's going to cross your face. And he sees right. the, the seam, and he just matches it, which is fine. Again, there's so many complex coverages in the NFL. I'm not going to be able to get every one of them, um, obviously. Not even close to every one of them. So, But still, I, I, think, I think he does a good job open to that strength um, and yep. matching cup deep down the field with the safety over the top. Yeah, no, that's a good job. I mean, the good job of seeing a vertical threat, and then especially if um, if um, it was three wide receivers, because you can play it against three. You know, if you got trips, obviously, you know, spread out there, and he's matching three. You know, kind of in a you know Tampa type setting or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he can do that. No, but that's this is a good job of him knowing the ass safety help seeing three and being able to play the route. Yeah, and and like there's some plays too, like where I'm watching, it's like a route concept or a coverage. And you might not know what it looks like on paper, but then to dissect it as it's happening without everybody sees on, on Google, those little yellow zones or blue zones in the back, mm-hmm. like on Madden, like it, yeah. trust me, there's some plays I watch like 47 times, like, Oh, this is cover three replacement. Like the safety drove down. He, you know, or cover four cut or whatever. Like there's the NFL is so goddamn complex for like a uh, cover three Kathy or rip or Liz or all those saving calls. Like, Oh my God. Yeah, that's what you say. The more you learn, the less you know. Like, you feel like an idiot because, like, how do I not even know about this plan? I'm like, oh, did I see the other thing wrong the other day? Like, what the hell is this? I, I don't like to learn sometimes. Um, <laughs> Mc, I keep it simple. McDougal, McDougal, too conservative, second and one. Uh, where is he at? Is he at I think bottom? he's on the bottom. Yep. Yeah. So again, I don't, I don't. Uh, what the, the, let's see. Now, I don't know what they're playing. Yeah, the why, coverage right here where he drives. Why, where he's, yeah. Yeah, why he's taking the outside guy and the corners taking the inside, unless they're playing three. Um, it looks like they might be playing of, three, and then he's, just, he's yeah. just biting because he sees him loading up. That's what it, right. might, that's what it looks like it, it might be. Yeah, because the, the linebacker is pushing out as well. But, yeah, yeah he's got to be – well, one, just going back to the alignment, if you're in three, especially versus bunch, just go ahead and be hit up the outside. Like, that's your spot anyway. Exactly. Um, Anything breaking outside, that's you just natural. <laughs> right. Like you, you, you right. have you have that outermost threat. Who's gonna anybody who's gonna threaten that curl the flat? Right. And so then too he, easy. He, he, yeah, it's too easy. Yeah. So one, he gave up leverage, and then two, he's kind of backing up. He's giving ground while working out to the flat. If he if he has his leverage, all he has to do is work laterally, and this is either a pick or a knockdown at least. 
Yeah, or he just doesn't even throw. I, I, I might have said third and one. This That was second and one. Second and one, But yeah. regardless, the, 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 the way he's playing it with the, the leverage he has and, and backpedaling is not, is not good for me. Um, yeah. Good for you. Um, so yeah. there's a mental lapses he has where he's like – sometimes he seems like a really smart player and sometimes he has mental lapses, which is going to happen in how many of snaps you play as a defense player a year. Let's say at this point in the NFL, if you play full snaps, probably 650 to 750-ish range. I know the average a couple of years ago was 130 plays a game, but I'm, I'm assuming now it's going to probably going up a little bit more, even more. Maybe it's 140. Um, so, and with how bad the, C, the Seahawks offense is sometimes, uh, even with Russell Wilson, the, they might be on the field 90 reps a game. Uh, yeah, that offensive no line is bad. Uh, yeah. Which, by the way, if you're Russell Wilson, like, yeah, I love Jamal Adams and all that, but uh, get me a freaking offensive lineman, maybe. Maybe old lineman, right. Imagine Russell Wilson with a lineman. Like, damn, he, is, he would be nasty. So, agreed. Um. Okay, so you he's he's right here. Um, they and he he just inserts himself in the run game, and then I'm assuming they 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 had the motion in, uh, inside right here with 83. 83 is mm-hmm. in a fill, so it's almost like a like an ISO play. Um, yeah. McDougal, this is a, this is a play where it seems like he's just responsible for for this uh, A B C gap. Um, which if you're if you're going to throw this, I mean, he might follow this guy in motion though too. So I'm not necessarily sure exactly what his responsibility would build uh, responsibility was before the receiver motion in there. Um, but regardless of what it was, I would, I want to see more of this in the run game. This is what we're talking about. Bring the fight, shoot the gap, drop your shoulder mm-hmm. into a guy, take him right into the running back. And he doesn't end up making the tackle, which, okay, maybe you want him to, but still I think a positive in terms of what we were seeing uh, before. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely more physical. And, I mean, he actually kind of gets through Olam and the wide out. Yeah. You know, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and you know he has – he has, uh, I think that's Sherman back there, whoever that – no, that's – I don't know who that corner is. But he's got – I know he, he knows that he has backup. His it's job Griffin. Is to shoot the gap. Yeah, it's is Griffin. Gr- yeah, Griffin. Yeah, it's Griffin, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his job is to shoot the gap, but he does a good job of it. Yeah, just finish the play, wrap up, you know, at least grab a leg or something. But – it shows that he has the ability to be physical. It's yes. just more of being physical on a, you know, on a more consistent basis. I think it's more of like that, like click and close. Like sometimes he just, he gets a little bit lost in space. And then he's a little bit too conservative and, instead of just, he doesn't want to guess and be wrong. Um, right. But yeah, like you said, like that, like that, that, I call that like the check hand of, of number 79 right there working inside uh, works past that. And obviously the mm-hmm. lineman gets contact with him. So he works past that, that, that hand, that hip, and then the receiver as well, which I, I don't know why. I don't even. I have no idea, honestly. For whatever reason, I think eighty three in the Rams is is Reynolds. I think he might be his name in two thousand eighteen. If if that's correct, I don't know why I know that, but it might be. I'm, I'm gonna look that up after now. But I don't yeah. know if I've ever seen him play. But I think his name is Reynolds. Weird. Uh, okay, McDougal, good play, even with catch. Where are you, McDougal? Alrighty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where what I think is a good play. Um. So yeah. what? And, and he's right. He's at the top right here. So the one thing I noticed about the Seahawks linebackers, at least from what I watched, was was like a decent amount of like spot dropping and them not necessarily matching guys. Like, okay, he's right. You know, you're you're in this like you're in the the hook to seam, the hook, the, whatever you want to call it in this specific zone. Um, I usually call these like interior guys where they're not the hook, the hook to seam. <clears throat> That's usually what I call it. But. Um, if anything, I would like to see the linebacker match this right here because that's your only threat right there and then carry him deep to McDougal. So I don't like what the linebacker does right here, how he's coached, where he gets lost, where it loses, you know, he loses that right behind him. But I like to play for McDougal, even though the catch is on him. Yeah, my only critique for McDougal would be to just go ahead and slide over a little bit more inside. inside. You've got a single threat, you got a corner outside, you got a linebacker underneath. I mean, this makes your job easier. To, I mean, if anything, it mm-hmm. makes it – that you can actually make a play on the ball if he's more inside because he's already established leverage. That would be the only thing that I would say. So, yeah, see, once Gurley goes in motion now, and, and it's a tight end. I mean, like, sit, yeah, go ahead and slide <laughs> – go ahead and slide over okay. and make it so, easy, you know, make it easy on you. Inside leverage, um, again, I, I don't know with all, like, the spot dropping that the, the – Seah- at least the, from what I saw from the Seahawks, it looked like a lot of spot dropping. We were not really aware of – like no, like two threat versus three threat, uh, three threat versus one threat, like whatever the, the coverage might may call for. It just seems like they're kind of just they just drift back and not really matching. Um, obviously meets him at the at the catch point and chops down at the ball. The, the good strong hands is eighty one Everett from. I don't know if that's uh, yeah called okay yeah, yeah Everett. Everett so yeah. 
good chop down at the ball and stuff like that. But like you said, I, I think that's a, definitely a good point. Like stay a little bit more inside because you have uh, Griffin right here if you work to break outside. So sheet a little bit mm -hmm. inside. Yep. Yeah, good Just point. down the red zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think, yeah, I mean, and then, I mean, like I said, I don't know if they're coached that way, but in the red zone, I don't necessarily – I wouldn't like him to be as deep in the red zone. Maybe like a yard, two yards, whatever it is. Uh, you know, you know, you never want to get too deep in the red zone. He you is know, Everett is depth. Everett is damn lucky that his right his right uh, thigh was there because if it wasn't, that ball is coming yeah, out. No, he he pressed it against his thigh. <laughs> He's lucky. Yeah. So like you know, um, yeah, I, I that, the leverage point is definitely definitely a good point. Good good play on the ball, but it's just uh, strong hands and a lucky thigh. Mm -hmm. um next play shoots gap he's right here uh, a b c d gap another play where on the goal line like especially especially like aggressive teams like you're everybody's gonna be responsible for a gap and just shoot the shit out of it because if you don't oh, then yeah. you know you're gonna, you're gonna give girly room to start running um and again good job by him taking a good angle to cut off the running back not necessarily going too vertical to to, to work vertical then then hop over to the running back he cuts off where the running back is going um yeah. Drops his shoulder, works past contact, puts him puts his right hand onto the back of eighty nine, and kind of like people call that the ice pick. Ice picks himself off of the other guy, right into him, yeah, boom, no. tackle. Yeah, it's a good play. It's a good job shooting the gap. You know, and not and the, yeah. The thing is, not being hesitant. As soon as the ball snaps, he's gone. Taking a good angle, mm -hmm. and yeah, and, make, and making a play. We need, I, I, need, I, I need to see more of this in the run game, what I saw in these last two plays from him overall. And I have more plays to go over um, even, you know, after you go. I'm not doing it tonight, but uh, tomorrow I will. So um, I want to see more of this, just, just less of the hesitancy from him and just shoot the gap and drop your shoulder because I know he can do it. I've seen it. And I haven't even shown the play of him dropping his shoulder into a pulling guard yet, which he did. Um, this play, next play, uh, big, 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 big hit on Cooper. <laughs> Uh, he is right here. Okay. Um, I, I forget exactly. And this is like the situation where maybe I should have like notes about what I called this and if it was a robber or whatever it might have been, but I don't. We're just going through this fresh. Um, huge shot. And it looks mm -hmm. like it, he he might have been just robbing anything that that came over um, over the middle. Anything that – let's see. That's his only thread. It looks like he's looking. He, he's he's shuffling to the inside, looking for anything coming across his face. So, you want to yeah. So this Robert. is this is like that. Um, because you know Seattle plays. They call it lurk. So it's either like three lurk or something like that, which is basically it's like robber or something just playing three. Three buzz. Like, it's like, so like yeah. I, so so three robber. I don't call it three robber. I call it three buzz. So maybe this is three buzz. Okay. Okay. Well, buzz is like different. Than, yeah, buzz and three buzz is different to me than three robber. Because oh. robber, you're truly robbing. You actually, you're a true robber. You're actually robbing the middle of the field, just like you would in in like one lurk or like one hole or something like that. You're just, you're buzz, just calling you're just you're just calling buzz where you actually have that intermediate buzz, zone, like no matter what you're at. Okay. Yeah, but buzz you're just playing regular three. Yeah, yeah I got you. Okay, yeah. it, but instead yeah. of the safety being outside curled to flat, he's playing more of that hook to seam in the in the buzz is what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. yeah see, like that that we're terminal like, uh, and again, I don't know where I got my terminology, but that's the terminology I got. So like that's um, something I can always adjust to, uh, but. Again, this is why some things are confusing. So I'm calling that three robber. I'll ch I'll change that in my in my notes. Uh, but again, <laughs> see, like, this is why <laughs> I know the difference between robber and now buzz. But like people who, who I don't know who that whoever I saw call it buzz. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna kill you now. So yeah. well, no, no. The only reason why I mean, and for sure, because I know Seattle calls it that. They call it lurk. So it's either three lurk or one lurk or whatever it is, you know. That's so I know for sure that they call it like that, and that's mm -hmm. three lurk instead of yeah. three robber. Right. Yeah. So um, one lurk, three lurk, whatever it is. Yeah. So and on this cool. play, again, it's physicality, and I put this play up on like so I always like put up like a teaser play on Twitter, and like oh this is helmet to helmet, this should have been a penalty. Now was it helmet to helmet? Yes, but it's incidental. Like, how how can you plan on Cooper dropping his helmet like that and dropping like I I know he maybe saw him dropping the ball like this, but it wasn't a penalty, and I don't think it should be a penalty. Drops his shoulder yeah. into him, and <clears throat> listen, like you know, I never want to root for injuries, and I hope this wasn't an injury. But anytime as a safety linebacker, you can leave a guy on the ground like this after a play, it's it's a good play. Like they're they're thinking it's twice about play. now yeah. coming across the middle. Like that's just football. Like it is what it is. You're gonna get smacked. Yep, so and you can see him you can see right right here you think he's 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 uh hearing footsteps <laughs> he's like looking at he's speaking inside right here yeah he's trying to hurry up. yeah he's trying to <laughs> oh, get it yeah. yeah 
Yeah, and actually, we do actually leads with a shoulder. I mean, exactly. The, you know, the helmets end up hitting, and I think that's why he didn't get penalized on this. But mm -hmm. yeah, he's leading with his shoulder. So. Yeah, and that's what people are like. Oh my God, it's a penalty! And I was like, it's not. Like, what are you supposed to do as a defender then on, on this play? You you drop your you drop your shoulder into a guy. He's not dropping his helmet into him. So. Yeah. Good play by McDougal. And again, I'm just throwing, throwing some of the physicality out there. Five plays left, or six plays left technically. Um, McDougal punch out man coverage. Okay. Looks like he's man on 87, which was Cook in 2018. I think yep. they Cook or the I think they Cook or the Rams or the Patriots or some team. He's on the he's on the, he's on them anymore. Um okay, so this is another one of the situations where he punches the ball out. So it seems like he, he just shuffles inside, matching, matching Cook, and then obviously he sees uh, Carr in the bootleg right there, comes yeah. back out. He throws it to 17 is Dwayne, Dwayne Harris. Harris I yeah. Yeah. But again, chasing, punch yeah. the ball out. Now the ball, the ball goes out. five yards out or two yards out of bounds or whatever, but still I'll, I'll mark it as a positive because I've been seeing him punch the ball out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the more opportunities you get punching the ball out, the more you can try to create, you know, create, uh, create. Excuse me, uh, you know, disruptive plays and give you, you give you a chance, your team a chance to get the ball back. That's good. I mean, they're 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 not gonna always fall your way. But the thing is, you just keep doing it. So you keep punching, you keep stripping at the ball, and like I said, Seattle they do a good job of you know teaching this and coaching this, and and hopefully some of this will bleed over, you know, to some of the other Jet defenders. Yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, twenty six. Okay, so this is a this is one of those plays where I I had labeled it doesn't make plays outside of norm. I think this is him to the ball. Or yeah, that's definitely that's definitely him right there. Mm -hmm. So again, like this is a quick hitting type play, um, and it, and it looks like cover another cover three right here, which obviously they run a ton. Um, and yep. let me move my window so I can see Stafford. This is one of those scenarios where okay, he's he's widening out because he wants the any, anything getting um you know uh, t towards the flat he wants to be in front of that um or be outside of it. But my thing with him is here if if he's widening out and he's looking at the quarterback, which it looks like he is, he should be aware of this receiver who to me what I call it is like he runs like this quick little snag route. Um, yeah, give him a little something. Give him a little something. That and once he starts loading up, like why not jump this ball? Like and I, and I know it's a quick play, but this is the kind of plays where I say like, he doesn't make plays outside of his norm, which I think like a really good safety makes this play. Like sees him loading up, uh, stops his feet and makes the pick or the, the PD. I don't know if you agree with me there, but it just seems like there's not a lot of plays like that. Wow, you! It's like kind of like I don't know. Yeah, what well, is all right? Well, there's two ways where you could have played this, and and different people do coach it different ways. So mm -hmm. like in this instance, particularly because it's a quick and play. I mean, all this is is curl wide, so it's easy. So, one, if you're the safety and you see the curl coming, knowing that you have somebody, the the running back going to the flat, which is the wide part of it, uh, you can hit the wide receiver on your way out to the flat, and, you know, that kind of throws the timing off. Or, like you said, uh, if he's looking, which he is, he's staring at the quarterback the entire time, now you can work your way through this curl route even slower like you can almost like come to a walk and make him throw mm -hmm. the flat route that you just play the flat route from inside out uh so i mean this just depending on how they get coached i mean and i think seattle they play more old school rules where you know work your way through curls to the flat you know don't get out leveraged by the flat route kind of deal uh you know to maintain the integrity of the defense so a lot of that has to do with the way that they that he's getting coached mm -hmm. you know as well based off of you know how how they teach it Tell you the truth, because a lot of yeah. people do play play this different. You know, they you know they they played a lot different. So, yeah, so no, he's, and it, yeah, he's just playing it. Yeah, okay, that it makes perfect sense. Again, it just I felt like there's a lot of plays where I was watching um, when I recorded initially that was just like, okay, like why didn't you make that play? But again, if like you said, he is getting coached that way, then there's really nothing right. in terms of like that's that's nothing he could do in terms of that's a perfect play call for one that quick hitter. Um, Mental laps on – where the hell is he? Where the, yeah, no, where is he? Okay, so he, uh, he's, he's like sugar in the A-gap right there. He's, he's, he's in the A-gap. Okay. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I see him. Uh, so, I, he's a, for me, it, it just it, – he's out of control right here. Yeah, he's too fast. Yeah, he's, and, yeah he's, just, he's too fast. Because his job, especially the way that this is drawn up, yes uh, – he can work his way to take away that, that quick hit and same on three, but he's got to be slower because 
you know, obviously just based off of what Detroit runs, you got to be able to see one or two coming back inside. Yeah, because you're responsible for for anything yeah. that's going to like be crossing your face right there. So, um, yeah, so if anything, just so be a little bit more under control, reroute, uh, you know, patter your feet, and then match 15 and cut off 15, which is Tate. Um, right. But instead, it just it's just too it's. I know he's on that exit angle, but it's just too much. Um, it's it's well, a too out of control for me. Yeah, well, he needs to be slower because essentially he and the linebacker replace each other. Mm-hmm. If you look at the the entire defense, see the linebackers playing deep middle. Yeah, they're playing uh, Tampa too. They're, they're playing Tampa, yeah. So he yeah, essentially yeah. he essentially replaces the linebacker, you know, in that short area. So he's got to be slower. You know, and you know, the linebacker that, is going to be matching that because he's opening to that. Three. He's right. Yeah. He's he's matching three deep. Yeah. So he's got to be slower to take anything coming underneath. So as soon as he starts breaking vertical right there, like okay, at that point it's going to be the linebacker. So like you said, slow play, get your hands on, and then cut off fifteen instead of uh, yeah. just too fast right here. Just be a little bit more under control. This is something he needs to play a little bit more conservatively. Um, yeah. Where he try to get too far to the outside, and he makes a tackle after, but still um, not a good play overall. Three more plays for this show. Good eyes. Let's see. I say Cubs cover six, but I don't know if it is. This is my initial labels of stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see. It. Uh, no, this looks like. Oh, well, hold on. What's what's happening on the bottom there? They're playing. Yeah, they're playing four on the bottom. Go to the top. Yeah, yeah. It looks like. Go back. So, well, he's he's on the top. It looks like he's a deep half, and these two guys are. Yeah. are so yeah, cover six. That's, that's why I, yeah. I like some people call it cover six. Uh, cover. Yeah. Uh, 42. I call it cover 42. six. Yeah, I call it six. Yeah. So they're both matching the vertical because now if, it, if this guy was a break vertical, 37 will match it. And then, but they right. both match it because it's the only vertical threat. Um, so that is cover six, at least from what I'm seeing still. And this is the, let me move, let me move my guy. Or let me move my guy. So I like, let's see, good eyes deep near. I remember watching this play and I, I remember labeling it and then watching being like a little bit more negative on it, but. Because the only thing with this is that this this which is not his threat he's he's not supposed to match this right here because he's responsible. No. For this is his job, so I right. like what he does right here. So he matches he matches him, and then he know and then I feel like he sees that that corner is matching him too. So he's gonna flip his eyes right there and kind of take something that's outside of his responsibility. Looks yeah. over, sees that that uh the tight end, and then gets over top on the tight end who who breaks it back towards the ball because Stafford gets sacked. But I like the eyes right, right here to to kind of go outside no. of what he's supposed to do. No, you're actually – you're exactly right. Seeing the corner, knowing that he doesn't have a deep threat, so now you can just find work, you know, is, is how we call it. You know, if if you're a deep half player or um, a zone player, even as, you know, a corner, if your man leaves, then now you find work. Now you, you, know, you get your eyes and your head on the swivel and now you're trying to find work. Because uh, actually the safety uh, – this inside safety actually screws this up. The corner does is doing his job, t- you know, taking the vertical – but that safety's got to say square, uh, and we see a lot of this in college where you get one vertical, one guy leaving, but you you get either one or two from the other side coming over on the diagonal, mm-hmm. you know, all the way across. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a cover four beater. A lot of people, you know, a lot of schools run that. So, uh, so no, but I do like the that he that he does, you know, have the patience on this play where he sees he doesn't have a vertical threat, so now he can find work, and he's kind of helping where he's needed now. So, so yeah. no, I, I actually I like this play. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely like that. Play. It's a li- it, it's like to find plays in deep coverage where a guy wasn't targeted. It's like something you gotta you gotta look for. Um, mm-hmm. Or if you're just being consistent with your eyes, like just try to look for it. Especially if you're watching one guy. Uh, yeah. McDougald hit. Let's see. I said combo coverage again, but uh, I don't know if it's. Let's see. You Ooh. can't see the deep. Yeah, you can't really tell. Yeah, you can't. It's it's hard. It's hard. It's hard, it's hard to, to tell. tell. Yeah. It's definitely hard to good, tell. Yeah, good reaction though. But like I said, like he's dropping back again, reading the quarterback. Sees a quarterback loading up, um, takes a good angle to the ball, pops mm-hmm. uh, get Tate, and it's the the ball is out. Uh, obviously ball is out. Yeah. So, um, good reaction yeah, no. time here. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's a good job reaction. Good feet. You know, he's not too wide. You know, he's bouncing. You know, he's able to break. Yeah, does a good job of putting the shuttle on the ball and you know, complete, making it make the play incomplete. I don't know why I initially called this combo. Maybe because it's you got. It looks like you have maybe man, man, and then all these guys are in zone. I don't know how I initially labeled that, but this is again, this is stuff I see at three o'clock in the morning. Where I'm trying to label it quick because I can't spend three hours on labels. So, um, good job, nice play. Yeah. Let's see. 
Uh, cover two penalty. Uh, oh. We're not ending good here. He looks like he's oh. deep. He looks like he's deep right here. Cover so it two looks like. penalty. Penalty, jeez. <laughs> Let's Five, see. 15. Well, he's already almost twenty yards deep. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, hmm. So I call so this is I I will bring this up. I call this I didn't like this penalty. I think he actually yeah. played this relatively well. That's not a penalty. Because he, he was turning to Yes. And he tries to find the ball. He can't find the ball. He's going back the other way to try to find the ball. It's yeah, not it's not, not McDougal's fault that he that, that the, the the quarterback put the ball too far inside right here. That's not his fault. Right. That's not his fault, no. Yeah, I would so. this, this isn't a penalty. I'm I wouldn't give him mm-hmm. no, I'm not gonna give him shit on this one. Yeah, That's and if you don't, play. and if you don't believe me, you <laughs> yeah. can go back in the review and look through all seventy plays. I this is one of the play I, I put this play up there, and I was like, I don't, I don't like this penalty for him because I think he played the ball well. Um, I do too. Yeah. Now it was deep I coverage. Think, Let's see. No, I think he did a good over job. The on top that. over the top over the top is patient, yeah. patient. The guy's we on the did, top. Yeah, yeah, we even. Yeah. That's a good play. He has a trail guy too, so he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be too jumpy on anything underneath. Like a, if if it was like a seven. And he plays it well, matches him hip for hip, you know, running stride for stride, looks to play the ball, cuts him off. Like, what are you supposed to do right here as a safety? I, I don't know. That's a good – yeah, there's there's nothing there. Yeah, so – There's nothing there. Yep. So, uh, good coverage play. So, we did end well. Um, but just the label <laughs> of that made me, made me a little bit nervous in terms of what it, what it was. So, uh, bad bad call by the refs. You, you have to help the safeties out some way. So, um, Marcus, from what you've seen from him, again, I'm going to do another show on this tomorrow. Uh, so there will be a two-parter out, which I know you think is a little bit too long, but it is what it is. I just got to do what I got to do. Um, <laughs> what are your overall thoughts on him from the 30 plays you saw, which, which is a good, a good chunk of change of, of plays to kind of at least have a really good feel of a, of a player? Yeah, well, what I do like is, even though it's not necessarily a negative, just like I said before, I think he – he doesn't necessarily do anything like overly flashy, but he, he does his job, which is more important than anything else that you're consistently doing your job. I do like that. I do like uh, that he's, that he has the ability to be physical. Just need to see it a lot more, especially in the run game. But I think what I helped him out, you know, helped the Jets out a lot more is his ability to play man to man coverage, whether it be on the slide, whether it be on the tight end. I think that allows you to do, it allows you to do more and it kind of changes your packages up front where you can just leave your normal safety in to cover the tight end or wherever it is. Like if you're a nickel or something like that. So now you can blitz and you can do more up front uh, with the front seven, as opposed to having to insert a McDougal or whatever it is. And now you're bringing extra DBs in and, and taking less and taking some of the bigger bodies out. Uh, you know, even though, you know, Jamal Adams was a great blister, but you know, if you've got linebackers, and D lineman doing the blitzing and the stunting and everything else, it just allows you to do a little bit more, uh, to tell you the truth. So I do like that. I think bring it, coming from Seattle, he'll bring some of that, hopefully some of that mentality that, you know, they instill and that they coach up there will rub off, you know, on the other DBs, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, punching the ball out all the time, you know, trying to be disruptive, uh, the experience and, you know, kind of the leadership qualities that, that they teach a lot of the DBs. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I think a lot of that will rub off. And I think he's one of those guys where he won't be a vocal, you know, he'll be somewhat vocal, especially from where he just came from, because, you know, they all talk in Seattle. So hopefully, you know, for him, you know, but it's constructive. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, it's not critical. Um, so yeah. I, I think it's a good fit. And I think, you know, he has the ability to do all those things that Jamal did and more because I think he's a better cover guy, you know, uh, especially in man coverage than, than what Adams is. So now, considering we got it's like, and this is a part of the trade where like, okay, they got two for the Jets got two first round draft picks, which is great in itself. Like that would already be like a good trade for the Jets. Now you get two two first round draft picks, and you get McDougal, who might not be a top five, top ten safety, but he's a starter. Like he he's a he's a solid, yeah. he's a decent to solid starter. So you're getting him at he's 28 years old, so maybe you can re up him for two three years. Now you have him in May, let Davis develop. So. Um, considering that too, Marcus, like this, this is even a even a better trade. Considering you got a player who's a quality starter. Yeah, you get you get somebody that's a quality starter that has experience, um, uh, and not just experience in regards to in terms of reps, but you also have a guy that has experience of being on a team that 
uh, has won, uh, you know, been to the playoffs, you know, understands how to do that. And, you know, believe it or not, you know, a lot of people don't really get this, but when you have free agents or you get guys that come from other teams that have won, uh, and especially guys that have won, whether it be one or two playoffs or one Super Bowls or one championships, and they go to a different team, like that, they bring that mentality over with them. Um, and they mm-hmm. try to teach that to some of the other guys. Like, no, this is, you know, not necessarily that where he came from is the better way, but you get the experience of knowing, you know, how to handle situations, um, you know, how to deal with different things, you know, within the team, you know, aspect of it, uh, you know, being, staying focused, you know, you learn those kind of things. You know, you pick up different things that they probably do differently, uh, at, at, you know, in other organizations that you don't, you know, that it, they don't do on their team. And, mm-hmm. you know, it only enhances you. So I think, you know, there's a psychological part to this as well that could also help, you know, the back end and, and just the defense as a whole, to be honest with you, that they can have them play better. Yeah, the, the one thing that I do want to mention that you did bring up, um, and obviously a lot of guys can speak well to the media, and this is why I always love – I love to hear um, retired NFL guys speak as compared to guys who are currently in the NFL because you can ask me any question of the NFL – yeah, we're working hard this week. Another week of practice. We got to look past the Cincinnati <laughs> yeah. Bengals and on to the Patriots. Like you, it's all pretty rehearsed. But right. um, in terms of like what McDougal's been saying, and I, I'm not too into the media stuff. Um, but he's been all about okay. I'm not Jamal Adams. I can't do everything Jamal Adams does. I'm a different player. I have versatility. I have this and and every clip I've watched, every interview I've seen, he seems like a super good dude. Um, which is a positive for a locker room. I'm, you can attest that more than I can. Having a good dude. And honestly. The way that Jamal Adams was in the locker room where he seems like a little bit of a rah-rah, me type guy at times, that might have been a right. little bit annoying to people. So I think bringing in a guy like McDougal, who seems like he's, he's, a, he's a loud guy, but if you watch the sound FXs on him, he's a really uplifting guy to his teammates, like the three or four games I watched where he was mic'd up. So um, seems like a good dude from everything, all, all the clips I've seen, all the, the media stuff. So that's another positive that, that you mentioned with the, the leadership that the DBs yeah. from Seattle bring. So that's a good point without even you maybe not even seeing that. So um, something I definitely saw watching him and, and looking at his interviews and things like that. So, uh, Marcus, any, any final points? The only thing I do want to mention, uh, again, the call-in show that's coming up, um, what I'm going to do this year, Marcus is not going to be on every show. He's busy. He's got, he's got shit going on. What I'm going to do though, something maybe intertwined with Marcus, unless Marcus sees a game where the jets play the bills and it's like a shootout. Marcus is like, Hey, I want to come on. I mm-hmm. still think I'm going to get Marcus's picks of the week to trash talk him a little bit. So I'm going to text him every oh, week yeah. and get his picks. And then Absolutely. what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do with people, I'm going to figure out how to do this. Um, we're going to do the wins losses. I'm going to pick them live on the, I'm going to pick well, not live on the air. This is recorded, pre-recorded, but I'm going to pick them. If somebody beats mine on Marcus's record, I'm going to give you like a free t-shirt and a free year subscription. But now at the end, I'm going to do with something with Marcus where, okay, well now if you pick the winner and the point spread against us, then you get two points for a win or two points for a loss, whatever. I'm going to figure something like that. But yeah. if, if people jump on the win losses, which I will be tweeting or the, the games, which I will be tweeting out every week. If you if you stay with it all sixteen weeks, you beat us. You you get a free uh, you get a free year, uh, maybe a t shirt or two. So uh, I think that'll be fun to interact cool, with some yeah. people. No doubt. And so I can trash yeah, talk cool. Marcus a little bit. Um, mm. <laughs> I, I I think you beat me by literally one game if I had that anywhere last year. So uh, we'll, yeah. we'll need to get back into that. Or maybe that was two years yeah. ago. But any final words, Marcus? No, that's it. I'm actually looking forward to see. I'm honestly looking forward to see, you know, to seeing how the dude was going to be used, to be honest with you. And I want to see, really, I mean, we know what his spot is, but now, because you don't know where Pooh's going to be, you just, mm-hmm. you don't really know where everybody's going to fit in. So I want to see, you know, where he's going to be used, uh, you know, and, and really, if anything changes coverage-wise, you know, considering where he came from to who you lost, um, you know, does that change, you know, some of the things you do on the back end and, and also what it does up front, because no, no Mosley, uh, I mean, you have your replacements there, but, um, you know, I just want to see what, you know, this team is going to look like now, like do the dynamics change a little bit in terms of the aggressiveness and, you know, how, the, you know, everything is called now, because you, you've got different pieces. Or, yeah. or he's going to just, you know, he's going to be stubborn and just, okay, this is just what I do. So this is what everybody's going to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, kind of deal. So it seems like, it seems like Greg that. Williams a little bit, he, he seems like he's pretty uh, diverse with what, what he can do. Um, so, all right. I appreciate everybody for listening and I'll be back in literally like a day by the time you guys get this for another McDougal episode. So I appreciate everybody yeah. for listening. <laughs>